In this video, we'll go through the second postulate of quantum mechanics and uh, go through some of uh, the consequences of the second postulate. So this, uh, this one says that to each physical observable of a system, which we'll denote uh, by Q, so Q is our physical observable, uh, we associate with it a Hermitian operator and we'll generally denote operators by a capital letter with a little hat. And a Hermitian operator is one that satisfies this property. If you take the Hermitian conjugate of the operator, you just get back the original operator. Uh, and this operator it operates on the same Hilbert space as the one that the system is in. So um, what this means in practice is we can associate a value to a physical observable, such as position, momentum, velocity, et cetera, for a, its corresponding operator by an eigenvalue equation. So this means that if an operator acts on a, a ket that's denoting the state of a system, this will return back the same ket and uh, the corresponding value of the physical observable. So, Q is the eigenvalue uh, of the operator capital hat Q. And this corresponds to the value of the physical observable that we're interested in. And that corresponds to this operator. And this cat uh, will sometimes call it uh, the eigenfunction of the operator Q. Uh, but you should keep uh, keep in mind the fact that cats will denote states of quantum mechanical systems. So this is also an abstract representation of the state of a system. Uh, we should also introduce the terminology that uh, the set of eigenvalues of an operator, which we'll usually denote by these uh, curly brackets, Q in this case. This is called the spectrum of the operator. Uh, a, a very important consequence of using Hermitian operators to um, sort of define physical observables in quantum mechanics is uh, for Hermitian operators, which we're denoting by Q hat, the eigenvalues are guaranteed to be real numbers. Okay, and this is important because the eigenvalues correspond to physical observables. A physical observable has to be real, it has to exist. So uh, this nice property of Hermitian operators uh, falls in line with uh, the physical requirements of a physical observable. The other important property of Hermitian operators is that uh, the normalized eigenfunctions of a Hermitian operator or distinct 
uh, sorry, the normalized eigenfunctions for distinct eigenvalues, so for non-degenerate eigenvalues, are orthonormal. So what this means is if you take the inner product of two different eigenfunctions of an operator that have distinct eigenvalues, this will give you uh, either one or zero. So it's one if uh, you are taking the inner product of the same eigenfunction and it's zero if uh, the two eigenfunctions are different. And we'll use the shorthand uh, delta ij, which is the chronic delta to denote this kind of quantity. Uh, it's just a shorthand notation for this. So uh, the this remains very abstract. So uh, a realization of this that you might be more familiar with is when you deal with matrices, uh, the eigenvalues uh, are the usual ones that satisfy this type of equation. And the eigenfunctions will be the corresponding eigenvectors of a matrix, uh, which for a Hermitian operator are uh, orthon orthonormal to one another. Uh, in the next video, we'll go through a third important property of the eigenfunctions of Hermitian operators. And it has to do with the fact that their eigenfunctions form what's known as a complete basis set. And we'll go through the details of that in the next video.